everybody, it's Mariah Fang. Welcome to my channel. Those of you that are freshly new here, please take a look at some of the other videos before you get to this one, just to kind of give you a heads up of what this whole channel is about. Um, but if you just want to dive right in, I'll do like a short recap. I used to be a tattoo artist a couple years ago, did it for on and off three years, and I don't do it anymore, but I may potentially do it in the future, depending. Don't quote me on that. I don't know yet. Just Give me a minute. I need some time before I think about that. I am going to talk to you guys about blackout tattoos, the facts and questions that people have asked me and a lot of you have asked on YouTube shorts. Like ever since I showed you the before and after of this, <laughs> this tattoo, um, it is still in the process. There's still some stuff that we need to do under here. That is a very sensitive spot. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk to you about the origin story of how it got to this point, a little bit of some care, some pricing, and some questions that you guys had. So let's kind of roll to it. And also for the sake of like names and business tattoo shop names, I'm not going to say that. Um, so I'm just going to say tattoo shop one, tattoo shop two, and then vice versa with the names A and B. So a couple years ago, origin story first. Um, if you want to skip ahead to the other parts, you can. Uh, this is just the original. How, why did I do it? Why was I interested in getting a blackout tattoo and all those questions. So originally I did have a tattoo that was planned and it was at Shop A, which eventually I would work at Shop A. And I really liked the Japanese claw dragon looking tree tattoo on my arm, but it just wasn't fitting anymore. And I kind of held on to that far. I was like, ah, that's fine. I can just worry about this later and whatnot. I just really want a tattoo. So I was looking around at places and ironically enough, um, person A that was at the shop with person B who got me the job, person B was my tattoo. So I was working in a hair place and person A was like, hey, um, I saw that you were doodling on your notepad and stuff like that. Would you want a tattoo? And I was like, absolutely. I really wanted a tattoo at the time. And I'm thankful for the experience that I got to. So. A lot of the tattoos that you see prior were done at shop A and person B was my teacher and eventually just taught me how to tattoo. Now those tattoos were a part of my life in that stage where I was like just starting to get into the tattoo world and like starting to figure things out. I was not very smart <laughs> back then because I was younger and I think that you know when your frontal lobe is not fully developed yeah there's of course, you're going to make hasty decisions because it's so brand new and so exciting. But eventually we grew up and that was a portion of our life. That was a stage in our life, which eventually I will kind of talk about tattoos and like age. I do think that like maybe wait to get a tattoo until you're at least like 24, 25. I don't know. I'm a little mixed feelings on that because my first tattoo when I was 18 was no, not good. <laughs> it was good, but it was not like resonating with me now. But that's OK. That's a part of life things change, life happens. We're just along here for the journey. Everyone makes mistakes. We're not perfect. Trust me, no one is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Eventually it came time to where I was a tattoo apprentice and I was like, these tattoos were great. Trust me, they were great. They, I liked them. But then a part of me just realized they weren't really what I thought. Because the person I was being taught under had really ingrained that everything had to have the color black in it. And I have no issue with that because it's all traditional tattoos. There's a third of rules of thirds, like third of negative space, a third of black, a third of color. That's the old traditional tattoo slogan, I guess, is what I would say. And what they would say. And I eventually had that ingrained in my head. I'm like, I don't like the style of these tattoos. And eventually got to a point where I wanted to do tattoos that were like blown up on Pinterest where you see bats and fruits or like animals and fruits and like animals that look neo-traditional and people that looked like more like hands popping up and I, I don't know there was a style that you could see that was developing and I wanted to do those kind of things I wanted to do like the glitter tattoos the dot work tattoos and eventually it became to a point of you can leave and I was like okay let's go I'm a person that doesn't like to have conflict, I will address something if bo something bothers me, but it is what it is. It happened and I had to leave the nest. So I left because I wanted to go expand my work and I wasn't getting anywhere. And that's going to happen normally when you first get your tattoo shop um, per se that you work for. It's not going to be perfect. 
it's not going to be glitz and glam. It'll have like that first three months of like, yeah, this is great. And then it drops down and then you have to expand yourself. You can't just sit in one spot. Yes, try to stick it around for like six months to like learn everything you can. But if you already learned enough, get out of there. Just if it's not working for you, if it's compromised, there's a lot of bickering, like there's old school tattoo shops that are just not worth it anymore. And I will say the place that I was in, like the Midwest, we're not like the West Coast, where in the West Coast you have multiple options. In the Midwest, there's not that much unless you go to like the major cities. Um, so I had to work with what I had and eventually we got to a point where, all right, we're studying more, we're at shop B now instead of shop A. And shop B helped me really push myself out there and I got to work for myself and it was nice to like, be in that environment to just immerse myself in that. So a lot of these old tattoos that you have seen up on here are mostly because of that experience. Do I hate that shop? No. Do I dislike what happened back then? Yes, but I'm not going to just spit words of this person did this, this person did that, and shove their name out there because it's not important. I think what is important is learning from your experience and then using that for future reference. So it wasn't all that bad. They were okay tattoos, but they did not really listen to what I wanted. So I said, all right, time to go. That was it. End of story. So some of you had some questions about blackout tattoos and I'm just going to answer the ones that were on here and then address some of my own so you guys know that most of what I can give you and of course if you go to a person that specializes in blackout tattoos they will know a little bit more than I do only because they're specialized in it and this is just like your basic ground coverage. So let's begin. So first question was why did you start it? Of course if you didn't see the origin story that's why I just had a lot of old work. Short recap. Second question, um, do I regret it? I have no regrets on this. I, no regrets, kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I had to insert that in there. It's just, sometimes I think of things and it's just like, remember, just, it's, if you don't get it, it's from a movie. But anyways, I don't have any regrets with this tattoo. I think it's great. I think it's amazing. It's still not done yet. So even though it is like, a blank canvas, there's still more that needs to go on there and still more that will be expanded in the future. Third question, some people were asking like, how long does it take and how did you find the right artist? I came across actually a little short story. So uh, the little squid that you see here was actually done by a really good artist out in the West Coast. He helped me out with my throat tattoo. I was very indecisive and I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I knew I wanted something that was like fierce and like, flowy that went right with my body style that I was kind of going for and he eventually hooked me up with an artist that was like hey I know someone that you might be interested in getting a blackout tattoo he actually is close by you can hit him up and ask him about pricing and stuff like that so that's how I got in connections it's all about like if your artist is willing to send you off to somebody else they care about your skin and they care about what your wants are and they'll know that you'll they'll come back like you will come back to them because you, as an artist, are mentioning, hey, I know someone that can do this. I may not be able to do that, but I know someone who can. Those are top tier artists. Those are people that respect all around. So that's how I kind of got hooked up with the tattoo for a blackout and it worked really nice. There is one thing I forgot to mention that underneath this blackout work, I did do some patchwork black work, which is, I call it patchwork black work because it's not full. <laughs> it, it does not look right. Um, basically, I had no idea what I was doing. I thought, you know, just get a bigger mag, just find the darkest pigment that you can find. Obviously, I couldn't because at that time, I um, didn't know where to look for <laughs> that kind of ink. So yeah, that part of it was like my fault for having patchwork a little bit until eventually I got it covered. So it's like one stage original, one stage Sadly, I did this. And then third, um, had this all covered up. So it was kind of nice to like have that coverage there. And it's a lot cleaner, trust me. I was not thinking years ago and I was just someone that wanted to cover it up as fast as I could. So take your time, don't do it yourself, have a professional do it. We're gonna go on to how long I had to sit in the chair. Um, it kind of depends. Uh, my artist is very particular in how long I sit in the chair because I 
it's just our bodies are all different and medication can affect your body. Foods can affect your body and caffeine can affect your body. Just little things can affect your health and can affect your skin texture. So first off, I have no medications except for like a multivitamin that I take. And the thing is, is that I drink a lot of water. I don't do caffeine anymore just simply because it makes it easier to get tattooed and I can't do it. My heart just can't do it. So no caffeine, <laughs> sadly. Besides that, um, just little things can affect. Don't use numbing cream. I do not like this. I don't like saying this either because um, it's like I have mixed reviews on numbing cream. Some people like it, some people don't, but for blackout tattoos, it depends on your artist. I feel like it messes with the healing process and you just kind of raw dog it a little bit. Some cases you may need it, depending on like halfway through the session, you're about to tap out. Just if it's been too long, tap out already. If it's been like maybe a little bit, it depends on what your artist thinks. Personally, I don't think it would be a good idea to go all in and have numbing cream before your appointment. That's just gonna mess up your skin texture and healing. So please don't do it. Also, same with like pink colors, don't, <laughs> please don't do it. Uh, it can thin out your blood, can thin out a lot of things. Just don't do it, just don't. Unless your doctor like says you need to be on it. Just trust what your health physician and your tattoo artist think. But I got mine done in patches. Uh, that sounds really weird to say after what we just talked about, but I had mine done from like my wrist all the way up to my elbow all one session, then another session on the underside, and it was about two or three, I want to say. Or was it two? I don't quite remember. It's been a long time since then. I think it's been two or three. Um, we did get a lot done, but I remember my hand had to be, like, separate because there's a lot of, like, your hand is so sensitive just because of joints and like knuckles and stuff like that. Like I even need to get this redone again and go over a second time just because I want it to be like solid color. And I think it is pretty much solid, but I do have ideas for the future with using white ink on top. It's gonna be very intricate. So it kind of needs that a little attention to detail. Then for pricing, I will say it was kind of up there but working with your artist, you can get it down to different chunks. So you don't have to do everything all at once. However, most of the time they want you to go the full session or like the full session to make, and it changes for each artist, but I can usually tap out around four hours. If you, I go like six, seven, it has to be a really good day. And I've had a lot of good food in my stomach before I even consider taking a long session like that. I just don't like doing long sessions that just, hurts my back, it hurts my hips, and I really can't sit in one spot for that long. I have to like move a little bit and my pain tolerance is, it's high, but after three, four hours, that's when their your body kind of like gets a little bit, I don't know, adrenaline, <laughs> we working today or are we not? <laughs> so it really just depends on what your artist thinks and what you think as well. Like if you think that you're gonna pass out like after a couple of hours, please, give yourself some time and breaks and like just time to reset. Um, most people want to say like, just get it all done at once, no breaks, but I believe it depends on how you feel and how much pain you can handle and just be nice to yourself. Don't try to go balls to the wall on something <laughs> so hard and just like, okay, let's just go for it and pass out. Like, no, please don't. <laughs> the healing process, I will say was a little bit of a different side too. Most people prefer their blackout to be dry. <laughs> it kind of depends. It really depends because the flakes that come off your skin will be big because you're covering a huge area. They're like quarter to quarter sizes or like they're, they're pretty big. That's all I'm going to say. The patches are just going to get big but I kept mine hydrated as much as I could not like soaking but to, like just a nice like moisturizer just kept an eye on it as much as I can try not to pick at it try not to peel at it I'm a little iffy about the whole Saniderm thing because Saniderm gets a little too much um, I think it traps a lot of bacteria and I like it to just be washed like washing my tattoos feels better than just like having it absorb in a sack. <laughs> That's so gross to say. But having your tattoo sit 
and a bunch of plasma and fluid. Yes, some tattoos require that, but to me, I just don't agree with it. I think that bacteria builds up and plasma it gets gross and just slimy, like very, very slimy. Even like when you take it off and you're like just pulling upward a little at a time, not opposite, because if you do the opposite way, it's gonna feel like a band-aid. So pull it like opposite. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it gets to be a little too much. Also, don't forget like if you're like sleeping on your bed sheets or like on your pillows and stuff like that, or anything that has like a fleece fuzzy side to it, try to be like sleep on the other side. Um, at night, I do wrap mine with plastic wrap, and then I had um, tape going around. Not like the scotch tape. What is that tape that is like for paper? I don't know. <laughs> Masking tape? I think that's it. And I taped it around the important edges so that way I wasn't like scraping it against my blankets or anything like that. Plus, I like to be warm, so it was kind of like in and out most of the time. Under the blanket, over the blanket, under the blanket, but I just didn't want it to like rub on anything. So the first two, three nights I remember doing that. Um, obviously a new plastic wrap around your arm, but try to keep it off clothing and then make sure you stay hydrated and eat a lot of like protein stuff. So like steak is good for you, chicken is good. Um, anything that is heavy protein. And as someone that doesn't eat as much meat, I still kind of do here and there, but like I try to eat a lot of beans and rice. Um, stuff that has like a lot of protein in it. So there's these mushroom steaks. I don't know if you ever tried these before, but I recommend them. They're really good. Uh, they have a, t a bunch of protein in it too. You can usually find vegan alternatives um, for high protein, obviously in your local grocery store or supermarket. So definitely stock up on protein to help you the first night to kind of like get all those, um, what's, the <laughs> what's the word for it? Get your body back in action to heal itself and recover from such a long tattoo process because blackout tattoos take a long time. Now, some of you probably are like, oh my God, like, why didn't you mention this earlier? Uh, can you put color on blackout tattoos? You can, you obviously can. Now, forewarning, this is not a color tattoo on blackout. This is not. This was done prior before I even thought about getting blackout. Um, I just had open space on my skin and the artist tattooed it, it is not over a blackout tattoo. Not over a blackout tattoo. I have to repeat myself because most people think, oh my God, is that a color tattoo over blackout? It is not. It is not gonna look like this. <laughs> a very good YouTuber I would highly suggest watching and I think that is very amazing at their work is um, Ephiral Emery, Remy? He's really good at like showing the process, oh my God, of his tattoos and the journey from blackout to having color on tattoos. Uh, I think it's amazing on how he is showing the world that like, yes, you can put color on top. All these other people, I call them old tattooers because they are not wanting to immerse into new things. And I think that's what separates the new artists of today versus people that are stuck in their ways and don't want to learn new things. I think it's amazing to learn new things. I think it's great. And if you just want to do old school to tattoos, that's great too. If you want to do new school, that's awesome too. Everyone has their preference. It's just, everyone has a unique art style, just like painting, acrylic, watercolor, charcoal. We all have different media formats, just it's all art. That's it. But he is a great example of how blackout can be colored and how it can be worked with. Um, he has plenty of videos that you should check out and I think he's a great example to the tattoo community and everybody that is looking and wanting to get a blackout tattoo. I'm just a beginner, so like, I have a long ways to go. My leg is in the process of blackout as well, but when that is done, I may get onto that journey and show you guys. Um, when that is complete, it is almost there. But for right now, you can check out my old tattoo video on my tattoo tour on the progress of that. And lastly, there's like a lot of other subjects I wanna to touch on this video, but I think it might extend. Um, scarring is a huge thing. I've noticed um, when I first got my tattoos, it's gonna leave a scar. Like tattoos create scar tissue, just a little bit, just a little, just a very tiny amount. If they do it right, it won't be as bad. At least that's just my philosophy. That's how our skin heals. Like if you get a cut, you get a, like accidentally hurt yourself with cat scratch. You know, we all have skin tissue that is just 
forming healthy skin. With tattoos, it can be different. Some create scar tissue, some create not. It all depends on your skin and how you are health-wise and how deep the artist went into your skin. So there's a lot of factors. Skin is a very flexible, huge organ on our skeleton that we have to take care of. And sometimes influences from outside environment can do things to our skin and sometimes things that we put into our body can also affect that too. So just be mindful of looking at artists that do have before and afters or like even good showing photos of like, hey, there's no filters on this. This is just what you get, what you get. They are great at what they do. But for scarring, it can leave some marks. Um, the best I can describe this is actually two things on my body that are probably eventually going to get covered. So a very good example is, I don't know if you can see this here, but there's a lighter, actually some scar tissue from previous tattoo that I've had done before. And most of that was from me doing a tattoo before my blackout, the patchwork, was something that I did on myself. And I didn't know the depth that I was going because I had to work with like one hand only and one tattoo machine in one hand. And you have to pull the skin a certain way. You have to be careful about your depth. And certain areas of your body have thinner skin than some areas like this. Like your elbow is very thin, your knuckles are thin skin, your, this whole area underneath is a lot different than your knuckles. So you have to be very careful about how you work with black work. Especially with these kind of tattoos, you're covering a huge area. You can easily damage the skin. You can easily snag it. You can easily do a lot of things that are just not healthy. Either not healthy or just like really damaging the skin. You just have to be super mindful in where you put it. So again, please go to someone that is professional. Also, just a reminder, this last question might be a little bit like hard for some people to comprehend. So I will put a little thing up ahead, like a disclaimer. If you are a little bit squeamish around scars and stuff like that, um, this is the part where you might have to like turn it to something else. I'm not going to show any graphic images, just talking about it. But if you're not afraid of it, just please continue. Just want to give you that gentle reminder. When it comes to like, um, survivor scars is what I will call them. Survivor scars, warrior scars, uh, stretch marks and stuff like that. Um, I personally have stretch marks. I do not have survivor scars. With stretch marks, it depends on the depth of how deep your skin is for it to be covered. You can have it covered, but it's going to depend on how deep that tissue is. Like if it's a little bit of scar tissue, it should not be a, an issue. Like I have stretch marks and spider, like not spider veins, um, the little zebra stripes. I have that on my hips and it's like, I had those covered and it looks fine. It looks, I can't even tell exactly unless I like really look close at my skin. Uh, which is amazing that we have tattoos that can cover the areas that we want covered. Some people have used rainbow colors on like their stripes and I think that's amazing. I think it's awesome that we can do that with stretch marks now and it makes me feel a little bit more confident. And if you think it feels um, something that you want to go with, go with it because no one's judging you. Just do it yourself. Have a great time in this life. Don't try to hurt anybody. <laughs> and then the survivor scars or the... Um, warrior scars, I want to say, is a little bit of a sensitive topic too, only because those scars, whether it's on your wrist or your arms, whether you're going through a certain stage in life where it's very depressing, um, so there's certain ways that you can get a design of a tattoo onto your skin that can camouflage that and make it look like it's not even there. Um, by camouflage, I mean you can go with either something that's not just like um, straight on black, which you can do. You can do that and eventually do like white out designs over the top. I've seen it before. I think they look great. Um, I think it's a nice touch that people have that access to cover up something that they don't want to see anymore. And there's plenty of tattoo artists that are genuinely like wanting to help you, especially if you've been in a situation where this doesn't resonate with me anymore. I want something happier. They can help with that. And there's also places that you can go into for like laser. I'm not a huge fan of laser only because I'm scared of it a little bit, but it takes a while. And there are ways to work around like certain skin tissues, like keloids, I believe is one of them. I could be wrong. I'm not a skin tech, so please don't at me on this, but um, certain laser technicians, I've been going through getting a laser touch up on my back a couple years ago and I might have to do it again soon if I want to go that route with getting my back tattooed. It just takes a couple of processes. It may take six or seven times to just 
get it all the way complete all that ink out depending on how dark it is for laser and black work tattoos i'm not too certain i'm not too like certain on how that project works but i'm sure there's other videos on that i personally haven't had that and i love my tattoos for the way that they are now but there's people out there if you need something research it look it up there's got to be someone out there and just don't give up on that however in a nutshell you can have amazing tattoos no matter what i just think it's the eye of the beholder art is art. It's literally something that we all deal with and I just want to put a little wrap on this video because it is taking forever. But yeah, that's, I don't know, art is life, I guess. So life is art. <laughs> that's the way I grew up was just like everything is beautiful depending on how you look at it and perceive it. So have a beautiful day, have a beautiful time wherever you are and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions, please answer, be answer below. Um, I will be sure to as answer as much as I can. Sorry if this is a mouthful, it's just like a lot in one video. So see you guys next time. Thank you.